Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfet. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace today the credentials of the newly appointed ambassadors of the Republic of Turkey, the Republic of Tunisia, the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, and Japan. The ambassador of the Republic of Turkey, Isin Kakil, arrived at Sakhir Palace where she was welcomed by the head of royal protocol and an official ceremony was held for her. The ambassador then presented her credentials to His Majesty the King and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty the King and the ambassador. The ambassador of the Republic of Tunisia, Kamal al Qaisani, arrived at Sakhir Palace where he was welcomed by the head of royal protocol and an official ceremony was held for him. The newly appointed ambassador then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King as the ambassador of Tunisia and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty the King and the ambassador. The ambassador of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, Muhammad Ayyub, arrived at Sakhir Palace where he was welcomed by the head of royal protocol and an official ceremony was held for him.
The ambassador then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty the King and the ambassador. The ambassador of Japan, Miyamoto Masayuki, arrived at Zakhir Palace where he was welcomed by the head of royal protocol and an official ceremony was held for him. The newly appointed ambassador then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty the King and the ambassador. His Majesty exchanged with the new ambassadors welcoming speeches on the occasion, hailing the relations between Bahrain and their brotherly and friendly countries and their progress in all fields, wishing the ambassadors success in their diplomatic duties of enhancing cooperation with the kingdom. The ambassadors conveyed the greetings of their country's leaders and their wishes of abundant health and happiness to His Majesty and of further progress and prosperity to the kingdom, commending the ties between their countries and Bahrain. Also present were the personal representative of His Majesty the King, the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, the Minister of the Royal Court, the Royal Protocol's Chief and the Assistant Minister of Foreign Affairs.
His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received first deputy president of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, president of Bahrain Athletics Association, and president of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, Zahana Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, who presented a number of officials from the Bahrain Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation brief following its organization of 50 championships for mixed martial arts, the MMA. His Highness briefed His Majesty on the kingdom's success in hosting various MMA competitions within the past five years. His Majesty praised the achievements by the kingdom in this regard, which reinforces its position in the international sports landscape and makes it an ideal destination for events in this field. He also praised the efforts of His Highness in enhancing the sports through briefs initiatives and its cooperation with the Bahrain Combat Sports Council and the Bahrain Mixed Martial Arts Federation to organize events for the youth. His Majesty affirmed that the establishment of the General Sports Authority is intended to support Bahraini sports on all levels and wished His Highness further success. For his part, His Highness appreciated His Majesty's confidence through appointing him as the head of the authority and affirmed that he will continue to implement the directives of His Majesty the King to further develop Bahraini sports. His Highness expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty for his support for the field of youth and sports, which have resulted in the launch of the brief competition in Manama, which broke many records on all levels. He affirmed his commitment to achieve the aspirations of His Majesty by further developing the field and raising the kingdom's profile internationally. The Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of the Ministerial Committee for Development and Infrastructure Projects, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, chaired the weekly meeting of the Ministerial Committee in the presence of Ministers' Committee members and officials from relevant public authorities. He affirmed that the Kingdom, under the leadership of His Majesty the King and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, will witness a number of strategic projects in the upcoming years that will stimulate economic growth, enhance the efficiency of the internal transportation network, provide additional transportation options at low cost between the countries of the GCC and provide job opportunities within the transportation sector. The Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications, Engineer Kamal bin Ahmed Mohammed, gave a brief on the implementation of the Ministry's strategic projects concerning the land transport sector, including King Hamad Causeway, the GCC railway project, Bahrain Metro, and a number of the government's 2019 to 2022 projects. The Deputy Premier directed the Urban Plan and Development Authority, in coordination with the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunication, to expedite the reservation of the final route of the King Hamad Causeway, which is linked to the GCC railways, and to take the necessary measures to acquire and compensate the lands affected by the King Hamad International Station. For his part, the Transportation and Telecommunications Minister stated that the strategic implementation plan and financial models of the King Hamad Causeway project are currently being prepared. As for the Gulf Railway Project, Minister Kamal bin Ahmed briefed the Ministerial Committee on the steps taken to conclude the coordination with the Secretary General of the GCC, which would pave the way for the operational plan. The consultancy service for the Bahrain Metro Project are among the projects included in the government's program and are funded from the state's general budget at a value of 1.7 million dinars. The Transportation Minister affirmed that the route of the first phase of the metro would include 20 stops. The ministry is evaluating 11 tenders submitted on the 2nd of June. In conclusion, the Transportation Minister expressed thanks and appreciation to the Deputy Premier for the support the ministry receives to complete its projects. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Zayani, participated in the consultative meeting of Arab Foreign Ministers. The ministers discussed a number of issues related to the process of joint Arab action, the challenges facing the Arab world, the political and security situations in a number of Arab countries, and means to enhance cooperation and joint coordination towards regional and international issues and topics. The Foreign Affairs Minister also participated in the meeting of the Arab League Council at the ministerial level in its extraordinary session on the file of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, the GERD, which was held at the request of Egypt and Sudan. The Ministerial Council of Arab Foreign Ministers approved a resolution submitted by Egypt, which reaffirmed that the water security of Egypt and Sudan is an integral part of Arab national security and rejected any action or measure that would prejudice their rights in the Nile waters. The resolution also stressed the importance of reaching a fair balance 
agreements and legally binding agreements on the Renaissance Dam that achieves the common interests of the three countries and preserves the water rights of Egypt and Sudan. The resolution expressed concern about these stalled negotiations due to the positions adopted by Ethiopia and its announced intention to continue filing the reservoir of the Renaissance Dam during the upcoming flood season in the summer of 2021, a unilateral measure that violates the rules of international law which may cause harm to the water interests of Egypt and Sudan, especially the water facilities in Sudan, the most important of which is the Rosaris Dam. The resolution called on Ethiopia to refrain from taking any unilateral measures that harm the water interests of Egypt and Sudan, including refraining from filing the Renaissance Dam Reservoir without reaching an agreement on the rules or, or for filing and operating the dam. The resolution also called on the UN Security Council to assume its responsibilities in this regard by holding an urgent consultation session on this issue and to take the necessary measures to launch an effective negotiating process that ensures reaching within a specific time frame a fair, balanced and legally binding agreement on the Renaissance Dam that takes into account the interests of the three countries. The Arab League Council at the ministerial level also expressed its congratulations to the UAE on obtaining non-permanent membership in the UN Security Council for the period from 2022 to 23. The Council also expressed thanks to Tunisia for its efforts in defending Arab issues and working to strengthen cooperation between the Arab League and the UN during its membership in the Security Council for the period from 2020 to 21. The Minister of Labour and Social Development and the Chairman of the current session of the Gulf Corporation Council's Labour Ministers Council, Jamil Hamedan, participated in the 109th remote session of the International Labour Conference, the ILC 2021, held by the International Labour Organization, the ILO. ILO Director General Guy Ryder, ILO Member States, Labour Ministers, representatives of labour organisations and labour unions, as well as experts from the relevant organisations, participated in the virtual conference. Addressing ILC 2021 on behalf of the GCC countries, the minister reviewed GCC states' efforts to mitigate the effects of the pandemic on their labour markets, adhere to international labour standards, enhance cooperation with ILO to ensure the growth and stability of their labour markets, and achieve balance between the three production parties through the launch of an economic stimulus package worth more than 12 billion US dollars to enhance the efficiency of the health sector and ensure the continuous provision of free treatment services to citizens and residents without discrimination. The minister added that the government of Bahrain has spent more than $1 billion to mitigate the economic repercussions on institutions and individuals which contributed to limiting the layoffs of national workers in private sector facilities. The Ministry of Housing affirmed that the service to provide housing plots instead of units to those with old requests in case their request for units carries on. The standards of income and ability to build housing units would be taken into account when carrying out the service, which makes it optional. The Ministry said that instant housing solutions are being offered as per His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister's directives to speed up the process. The Ministry also affirmed that it is in contact with those who request data back to 2001 and 2002 and are interested in benefiting from this new service as per the relevant rules and regulations. The CEO of Government Hospitals, Dr. Ahmed Lansari, made a statement while participating in the government's media briefing, which has been organized with the National Communications Center. The CEO said that the project of self-management will contribute to increasing the performance levels and patient satisfaction as per international standards, along with financial sustainability, competitiveness, transparency and justice. He said that a plan has been completed to develop the SMC and its ER section in order to decrease waiting time. He also said that external clinics will be included in the center to receive patients in the evening. 
in line with its efforts that aim at supporting the business endeavors of the youth and foster a culture of innovation and entrepreneurship, the Bahrain Chamber has launched a fundamental guidebook titled Iqla. Speaking about the initiative, Bahrain Chamber's Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Shakir Shatter, explained Iqla is for all those who wish to start a business. He added entrepreneurs and startups may not be aware of the many governments and private organizations and banks that offer services and programs for them. Hence, the need for this comprehensive guidebook. For more information about this, we are joined by the Manager of Research and Initiatives Center at Bahrain Chambers, Mr. Fatma Sayyid. Hello, Mr. Fatma. It's good to have you here with us tonight. Can you tell us about the role of the Bahrain Chamber in supporting business startups and the youth in this field? Um, hello, it's my pleasure to be with you tonight. First of all, I would like to highlight that the Chamber is a primary mandate is to enhance the contribution of the private sector to the local economy by supporting Bahraini businesses and SMEs. So as you all know, the SMEs here in Bahrain constitute of 98% of the total number of establishments in the Kingdom of Bahrain. And they are considered as the backbone of a strong private sector. So therefore, in the chamber, we are working towards enabling the SMEs to maintain business continuity through addressing the main challenges that we are facing and we try to find the proper solutions. As you just mentioned, the Atakla chocolate, it was launched as a part of Chamber's efforts to serve SMEs and to encourage them to develop their, their business performance. Um, also, this chocolate can help SMEs to start. Um, also, we can consider it as a reference box for startups to guide them to start their projects and to know the support they can get from different entities in Bahrain. So it's just like a one-stop shop. They can share to the box. They can see different entities, what type of services they can support them and how they can support them and how they can start running their businesses. Well, thank you very much. And that was the Manager of Research and Initiative Center at Bahrain Chamber, Ms. Fatma Sayyid. It was good to have you here with us tonight. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,032,832 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 872,508 had taken the second. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. And the Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 11,595 with 1,419 recoveries, 811 registered new cases and 10 deaths. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.